Hello, and welcome to FIFA World Cup Dish Out. I'm Neil Shaw, your host, and I'm here with expert sports presenter RK. How are you doing today? Very good. Thanks so much for having me. Very good. Good to have you. And today we're going to talk about something that has been a hot topic before and during, and probably going to be after the 2018 FIFA World Cup. VAR, Video Assistant Referees. So, um, from what I understand, VAR is used and allowed to be used, at least in this World Cup. Anytime there's certain goals that need to be looked at, there's penalties that need to be looked at, there's straight red cards or mistaken identity. These are the four uh, times that uh, you know, the main referee can go back and take a look at um, the video and see if uh, he made the right call and change that call if, rec if necessary. Now, we've already seen we've had about uh, 17 matches already, and we've seen it uh, VAR used a number of times. Uh, everyone has their take on it. I'd love to hear your take. Good? Bad? I, I think overall it's good. I yeah. mean, uh, uh, let's be honest. I mean, we, we are uh, in an era where technology is being used for almost everything, uh, right? So I think it's, if, if technology is going to help you uh, getting close to perfection, you can never be perfect. That's, that's, that's always been my thought. I, I think you should use it. I know the, the, there are arguments that it does slow down the game. Uh, but at the end of it, if it's going to help you get those decisions better, You've got to use it. I mean, you look at cricket, you've got DRS, mm -hmm. you look at uh, tennis, you've got Hawkeye, you've got uh, rugby, you've got, uh, you know, almost every sport that is embracing technology like never before. You look at hockey, field hockey that is, you've got technology that is being, um, that has come to the aid of uh, the, the, the officials. And therefore, I see absolutely nothing wrong, really, as far as uh, the VARs are concerned. Mm -hmm. So I think what we have seen already, uh, also to add to the fact that you, you spoke about the parameters where uh, the referees can have a two-way communication with uh, uh, the members that are operating uh, mm -hmm. with, with the cameras and looking at further footage very, very closely upstairs. It's a centralized uh, uh, area in Russia which is operating and, and therefore they are communicating with the referees at different venues. So uh, I, I think what's also important is if there are any off-the-ball incidents. There is a facility where uh, people who are manning or who are looking at those various cameras that are being placed are able to communicate to the referee and therefore he can go and stop the match and ask about it, review the footage and therefore make a call. So what is important in VAR is also the fact the referee is still the boss because his interpretation still is very, very important. He goes back, looks at a foul. If he thinks it needs to be given, he can still give it. If he thinks it doesn't need to be given, he can still say, no, I'm not going to give that a penalty. So, in a sense, just like cricket, mm -hmm. you've got the powers still kind of, uh, you know, uh, centered with the referee slash umpire. But what could be an issue is you've taken a lot of these powers out of your linesman. So, mm -hmm. when it comes to those close offside calls, you, you, you are... In a way, asking the linesman to hold on to your calls for as much as possible so that the VAR can possibly take effect and therefore you're taking the control off your linesman. So what, what can happen? It's a bit like a square leg umpire. Mm -hmm. So for almost everything that happens, you go straight away, indicate there, you go to the third umpire. Mm -hmm. right? So you, you don't want to take a call and therefore the entire world looking at you and saying, hang on a minute, was it the right call mm -hmm. or, or, or was it not? And also the fact that I think when the players have been briefed very clearly about the number of cameras that are being operated and the number of cameras that are going to be focused on a particular game, as many as 33 cameras per game, so which, which means that the, the number of fouls have come down, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the number of uh, red cards w will definitely come down because you know that if you are blatantly going for an elbow, mm -hmm. you know a VAR could come into play and you could be clearly caught out. So, in that sense, I think intrinsically, it is, it is kind of, um, uh, you know, playing or sub subconsciously, it is playing on the minds of uh, a few of these footballers. And therefore, you don't want to commit something and look extremely silly, uh, you know, on replays and whatnot and stuff. So, mm -hmm. I, I, I think, I mean, overall, I just, just, just to take example of a few numbers, mm -hmm. I think overall, the average of sides have come down to 2.81 from the previous low of 3.13 the average penalty is now is 0.56 mm -hmm. which is the most since 1966 right and in terms of goals from set pieces are 55.3 percent now because of var and because the fouls have been given so mm -hmm. they are set pieces so more goals which is already 25 percent more than what we got to see four years back so i'm a big fan of technology i'm yeah. a big fan of technology if it helps you improve why not embrace it 
So you're all up for it. And um, what do you think about yesterday's uh, the game, Senegal versus Poland? The player comes on, uh, the uh, the fourth referee lets him lets the player on at the you know time where it may not be always the uh, the, the right time where you know Polish players kicking the ball back to the goalkeeper and uh, the the substitute or the injured player comes on and scores a goal. At that moment, do you see VAR VAR being something that needs to be looked at, or is that just a call by the central referee to, to look? Let it I mean, go? I think I think every I mean, whenever you use any kind of technology, you're going to have its pros and cons because it's it's in, in whatever sense you say. I mean, it's a, it's subject to interpretation mm -hmm. as well. I mean, I agree there are issues in terms of where you should be taking it, where you shouldn't be taking it. Even in that game between England and Tunisia, I mean, in terms of the equaliser that was scored by Tunisia, was there a foul that was, mm -hmm. that, was, that was around at that point in time? So that was one of the questions. As you rightly said, I mean, the game between France and uh, uh, France, I mean, you had plenty of VAR opportunities as well. So, I mean, there are moments when you could have uh, turned around and said, hang on a minute, it didn't really look perfect for me. But... Broadly, if your pluses outweigh the negatives, mm -hmm. you would tilt towards that. I mean, there's nothing foolproof, mm -hmm. but as long as you're basically reliant on that technology and you're willing to experiment and your experiments broadly are giving you gains, you might, you might, I mean, okay, in, in a batch of say 100, mm -hmm. if 80 are saying, okay, you know, it's benefited me or it's benefited the game, you, you would trust that 80 because I know there will still be a few aggrieved uh, because eventually it's about perception. Uh, you know, a classic case. I mean, say for example, if a VAR had been used for that uh, Mo Salah Sergio Ramos incident in the Champions League final, yeah. I seriously do not know which way it would have gone because mm. it is again subject to interpretation. Yes. Right? I mean, did, did Sergio Ramos consciously not let go of Mo Salah and therefore Mo Salah eventually had that shoulder trouble? I wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was not a yellow card, but was it a yellow cardable offense? Real Madrid fans will differ, Liverpool fans will differ. But, I mean, these are moments that we will encounter mm -hmm. as we progress. If we are able to kind of dish out a de reasonably good solution for things, you know, technology is the way to go. I'm sold. I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> technology is the way to go. It's changed the game, uh, definitely, but uh, it seems like it's made things better, made things tighter. Um, it's kept everyone on its feet. The referees on their feet, the players on their feet, even the fans on their feet. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, we'll Take off for now, but we'll definitely be back. Keep watching Sports Kita for more 2018 FIFA World Cup football dish out. Thank you.